Naya Jones is an entrepreneur with a passion for self-care, journaling, and mental health. As someone who has always struggled opening up to others, she fell in love with journaling at a young age and used it as an outlet to release her thoughts and feelings onto paper. After graduating from university, she decided to create the journal that she wanted for herself. She soon realized this journal could be helpful to many other people as well, which inspired Inside the Now, a now multi-million dollar brand. Hi everyone, welcome back to a brand new year of the unfolding presented by the Loveland Foundation. I'm your host, Rachel Keener, and today we are joined by the inspiring Naya Jones. Hi, Naya. Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. No, I am so happy you're here. I know we connected last year at our gala and we got to meet and that was wonderful. And I was like, I can't wait to have you on this podcast because you own a whole company and you are the CEO of a whole company. Like That's amazing. Like, that's truly amazing. I, I loved every second of it. Oh, no. Like, everyone loved their journals. Um, We all got these Dig Deeper journals and I've been putting them to you. So thank you for that. Um. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, Naya is the founder of Insight and Out. Um, Insight and Out is a wellness company. I will let Naya tell you more about it because she's literally the person who created it. So Naya, can you describe what Insight and Out is? Yeah, of course. So Insight and Out is a wellness brand. We sell guided journals, planners, and just tools that really help with reflection, introspection, and setting intention in your daily life. I started the business in 2020 out of a personal desire for personal growth and improvement during a time in my life where I was just kind of feeling far from myself. It was in the midst of the pandemic. And for me, one of the things that the pandemic kind of forced me to do was slow down. I've always been like an extremely just like busy, ambitious person. And that was like the first time I had time to really sit with myself and ask myself questions. It actually started with a list of questions that I wanted to answer for myself. And then through that process, I realized that this is something that I'm sure a lot of other people are experiencing, asking those of themselves these big life questions of like, why am I doing the things I'm doing? Like, what is my purpose? Oh. Um, and just like reflecting. And uh, so that's how I first had the idea for the guided journal. And we ended up launching, I think, like three months later. Um, it was crazy. Like it was a super fast process, but it was just like one of those ideas where I was like, this is exactly what I'm supposed to do. And it felt really urgent mm. and the rest of history. <laughs> wow. History being made right now. I think that's amazing. Yeah. How you were able to find the space and the clarity in the pandemic to really sit and be introspective and ask yourself very important questions. I would love to hear more about what those questions were and like how you got here and like the fact that from sitting still to coming to like, oh, I have an idea if that could help people and like a business that could help myself and more of that. Yeah, absolutely. For me at that stage, it was a lot of like why. So I felt like I was doing the right things. Like I was in, I had just graduated from college. I was about to start my full-time job at Meta. Um, like I was doing those like textbook things that like my, your parents tell you to do, but I didn't necessarily feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And I realized by like going and going for so long that I was like, why am I actually doing these things? And that's where I wanted to like create more intention in my life. And I think the first step in creating intention is like really knowing yourself and like understanding mm -hmm. yourself desire. So a lot of the questions that I was asking myself was, related to that like what was I don't know like my purpose and like why was I doing the things that I was doing um what was my motivation what was my goal like what was my mission how was I gonna serve other people through the work that I was doing it was like it was deep stuff <laughs> um and like but for me during that time I was like you know, this is like important. Like, I feel like this is not something that people just like get up one day and they're like, yeah, like, let me ask myself all these like big, deep life questions. Mm. So basically, I was like, how do I create a way to make that easier for people and create like an experience for people that are wanting to be more introspective? Oh, I think that's amazing. I think especially you mentioned you had just graduated from college. And I know when I graduated a few, how many years ago? Well, it's six years ago. Wow. 
<laughs> I remember thinking like, okay, you graduate and now it's time to get a job. And now it's time to just be like an adult. And like, you kind of, there's no right. like guidebook on how to do it. I remember all of my friends, we all had the same questions. Like, what are we doing? Like, how do we, how do we do this adulting stuff? Like, how do we mm-hmm. make sure that like, we're prioritizing our friendships and prioritizing our health? And like, also like, how do we like, like do finances and like save money and like all these different things that like people just tell you about, but no one tells you how. And also you're also dealing with so much mental stuff of like, you're no longer a student. You're no longer um this idea of like who you were as a child. You're fully becoming an adult. And there's a lot of mm-hmm. whys that come up, a lot of hows, a lot of what, like a lot of just questions that come up. So all the questions. <laughs> all the questions and no answers of just every, yeah. every day. But like, and I think it's just amazing that you were able to use those questions, not only ask yourself, but create something that allows people to be more introspective and to have like a self-discovery guidebook, so to speak. And like, I don't know, I just feel like, how did you know that journaling would be that vessel for these questions? So for me, I actually have been like a very long time journaler. I've journaled Mm -hmm. since I was a little girl. And it's crazy because like, I found journals from when I was like seven years old and it's crazy to look back at now. My parents have done a very good job of like holding on to all my stuff. But so journaling has like always been my like release and my safe place because I've always had a really hard time like opening up to other people and like expressing myself since I was younger. So that was always my outlet. But I think the thing about journaling that has been cool with me, especially in different stages of my life, is that like it brings you back to yourself at different stages. And sometimes like the things that I'm writing about are very different. And it's just amazing to be able to reflect and just like come back to yourself and be like, like, hey, like, how are you doing? Like reflecting on what's going on in your life and the time when I was asking myself and I was going through a big transition period was one of those times where I was just like writing a lot and, and coming back to the, like, who am I type question. So, yeah, no, I think a, I commend you for journaling and like starting at seven to journal and then still have <laughs> look back on. I can only I imagine. Know. I have, <laughs> but I had this, um, journey being Jones. I don't know if you ever read those books. Um, oh, she had like a, bad. Okay, great. Because I love some Junie B. Jones. <laughs> that was my girl. <laughs> the B stands for Beatrice. Um, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, I remember she had like a like a like a guided journal, and I remember I found it like when I was being out and I was moving out of my mom's, and I found it, I was like, oh my goodness, like, and it was so cool to see what my like how I thought back then, and like how I thought as a child, and how still some of those things like rang true for me, and then how some of the things like changed drastically. It was like, oh, by the time I'm 22, I'm gonna be married with a family, and like just I was just like, oh wow, like that. <laughs> cut like no (laughs) and like just seeing like where my mind was at and like what I was thinking but also talking about the things that brought me joy like my family my friends and like being creative and having those creative outlets but it made me really want to go back into journaling I've always struggled with journaling though just because I'm just not consistent with it. I don't know. I never know how to start. I never know. Am I like talking to like dear Rachel? Am I talking to myself? Am I talking to like the open? Am I like, what, what's the POV? Um, How do I like, do I only write when something's going on? Like, so I guess like from an expert journaler, what do you recommend people who struggle with journaling, struggle with consistency, struggle with just starting how to journal? How do you get into that space? How do you tap into that? Yeah. And I don't think there's any expert journalers. I think the amazing thing about journaling is it's to each his own. I like, I always get online and I see like different, like cool ways that people journal. Like I, on TikTok, like there's this big trend in like very artsy journals and people are like almost like scrapbooking. And I think that's like super cool. Not something I've ever done, but there's just like so many different ways to, I guess, like release your, your thoughts onto paper. For me, like the things that have worked are like honestly just like reflecting on like what's going on in my life like it's kind of like a diary style but then also it's like there's opportunity a little bit deeper into like what you're feeling and experiencing I think the nice thing about having a guided journal especially for people that are like kind of like hesitant or like don't know like how to approach it is 
it gives you that guide to answer questions. And like, it kind of gives you even the routine. Like we have one journal that is dated. So there's like one journal prompts for every single day of the year. And then we have another one that's undated if you kind of want to go at your own pace. I think the really nice thing about the data journals is it, it kind of helps you in that like creating a routine piece for people that want to be more consistent. Because as soon as something's dated, it's like you feel a little bit of like obligation to be like, okay, yeah. yes, like I want to get back into this. But I, 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 again, I don't think there's any like one right way or one wrong way. I think trying different things and seeing what works best for you. I think that's really helpful. I, I know with the Dig Deeper one, there's so many um, questions on each page. And like, it seems like I like to like flip through and just see like the random one and like, just like let that question speak to me. Cause I don't know, sometimes I think we're chaos that way, but um, I think, and there's also like, quotes in the book, which I really like, cause it kind of helps set that intention of like, oh, like we're going to like be writing from like a source of inspiration almost. And like these questions really help ground at least for me, when I was doing some of the journal prompts, like they really helped ground me and like set the, like set the tone of like what I want to write about. And then like, I ended up writing about something that's completely unrelated to like the question, but like still yeah. going back to myself, you know? And I was just like, okay, now I see what you did there. Like, it was like really, yeah. like really therapeutic and really like, really like felt good to like express that. And like, also yeah. I remember in college, my sister had gifted me this like, book of questions you know that you write that you supposed to write down and since writing was never the way I express things I found that through connection is like where I really like learn how to like be expressive and like with people so me and my friends would go through the book and just answer ask each other the questions from the book and like 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 sit and like think about those questions and stuff like that and I really think that like with your journals there's like so much opportunity for like so many connections to happen in like such a wellness space and I, I guess that's <laughs> yeah no it's like it was really nice and i really also it's like such a beautiful journal too <laughs> like um, very good. but no like being in the wellness space like how has that been for you in that like perspective of like having like being a black woman in the wellness space i know with the foundation we're all about providing mental health resources and access to therapy for black women and non-binary folks so yeah like what have you faced on this journey of being in the wellness space and what have you learned about it yeah, I think there's two like main challenges that come with like being in the wellness space. One is like I like I'm coming from I guess a business background, not background, but like I've started a business. Yeah. So it's like there's this like interesting intersection between like being a business owner and then being a business owner in the wellness space. Because on one side, like as an entrepreneur, like the messages people tell you is about like grinding and like no sleep you got to work yeah. hard and like accomplish all your goals like if you want to be successful and then, then on the other side being on the mental in the mental wellness space is like I'm teaching people like how to prioritize themselves and how to reflect and like be aligned with what they want so it's like sometimes it feels like those things are opposed and I've been learning how to create like a really good balance and and showing that like Yes, you can like still work hard to, towards something that you care about without losing sleep and like not eating and like having yeah. all these like unhealthy habits that make you feel drained. So that's been one challenge. And then also like just being a black woman in the wellness space, I think historically the wellness industry was definitely not created for us. And I yeah. think in the recent, we've really, really been trying to challenge that and, and show that the practices that like support your health are for everyone. And, and if not specifically for people who experience a lot of trauma um, and just like the the pressures of being a black woman in, in America and in society, I think comes with a lot of like emotional turmoil. So I'm really like happy to be in this space and to be representing. And I want to always continue to create opportunities for other women of founders and wellness, but then also people who are on the receiving end. Like even for example, when we're thinking about like who we're partnering with, like how do we show like black women the, the space and show that like this is something for them as well. Oh, I love that. Hearing you speak, it reminded me of something that our CEO Charlene and Rachel say all the time is ease with the abundance and like combining the two mm -hmm. and they both can coexist. So you being a business owner and also a business owner of a wellness brand where yes, you do have to hustle and yes, you do have to like 
so to speak, grind, but you also have to remind yourself because this is the product and this is what you live by. It's like, I, there has to be like some type of like ease with it too. There must be some type of grace and like gentleness mm-hmm. with coming with it. Cause growing up and like, even like up until recently, honestly, up until I started this job, I just saw wellness as like a luxury thing. And mm-hmm. Like it only goes to people who can afford it, you know, or people who have the privilege of being well, then everyone else is kind of just like left to their own devices or left to figure out on their own. And one thing I really like love about Inside the Now is that it's meant for, like it was accessible. It's like wellness is for everyone and it creates space to like come back to yourself. Like, feeling good about yourself shouldn't be like this like new idea of thinking. It's just like should be like a right that everyone should experience. So I'm super grateful that you created a space and a lane for that and just excited for all things to come from it. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. (laughs) What would you say has been like the most challenging part about starting a business? Like how were you able to, yeah. How, how, (laughs) how did you do this? How (laughs) was that venture and journey been like for you? Yeah. I think in the beginning it can be very overwhelming because you have an idea and it's like all cute and you're like, yeah, I'm going to like put this out into the world. And then like you actually go to do the thing and then you realize how many steps are required before you can actually like create something and share it with the world. And I think a lot of people like get lost in that translation. It's like, okay, it feels like really hard to do. So maybe it's not worth it if they don't have like that really strong, like drive and motivation. But I think for me as what's been helpful is just like taking it one step at a time and like treating it as if you were like learning something in a class. I think you get overwhelmed when you're like looking at it whole and like, oh my gosh, I need to do 10 million things. And like, I'm going to have to be worried about finances and banking and your EIN, all these numbers that you may not have an experience in, but it's really just like one step at a time. And like, thankfully we live in a society where there's like an abundance of resources and like opportunities to learn. So yeah, I just like approach it like, you know, I just graduated from school. I'm just going to take another class and I'm going to learn like one day. And I think that's what has really, really helped me like stay focused. And even to this day, like I'm still like always learning things and always challenging. There's always going to be like a new challenge or like something new that I'm trying to figure out. And like, although it can be challenging at times and a little bit overwhelming, Honestly, you just have to like take that piece by piece. Yeah, definitely like zooming out from things. Like you're like, yeah. like just like, okay, like it's not that overwhelming if I actually will be zooming in, I guess, because like you're like you said, mm-hmm. taking things one step at a time and like seeing how, all right, I just have this one obstacle to get through. And once I get through this, I'm going to learn how to do the next one. And just staying in a space of yeah. like always learning, I think is the key to like anything. Like even with like this podcast, like just taking like, okay, one one guest i just gotta like have a conversation with this one person and like see how it goes and rather than be like oh i have to do this every single month and like figure it out and like that could be overwhelming right. like it's overwhelming to like start a business and like everything that we do in our lives whether it's like starting a new job or a new hobby or a new like you know business ventures just like taking time to just take that one step so no it's exactly. really cool. <laughs> so i know it's like out just celebrated their three years congratulations happy anniversary (laughs) that's amazing three years is no small feat um how what have you learned the most from this three years so far and like what have you what surprised you about three years of business yeah i honestly i think it really goes back to like that taking it one step at a time i think something that i've really learned is to like be present in every moment like something that I struggle with is like I'm super ambitious so I'm always thinking like okay like inside the now can be this great big amazing thing which which it is today and I have to remind myself that like at every stage that we're at like just to be grateful and to like recognize that I'm learning in this stage because I think it can be really easy to compare myself to brands that have been around for like 10 plus years or like founders that I feel like they know everything and have everything together. When in reality, Mm -hmm. like behind the scenes, I think we're all just still figuring it out. So I think what's helped me the most is honestly just like slowing down. It's like, yes, I can create like five-year plans or I can set my vision for the next year. And those are amazing. 
but I should also be really grateful for the journey that I have today because I'm learning so much right now. And I'm not, you can't like scale crazy right away. Like there's a reason why growth takes time, right? So that's something I've definitely, definitely learned. Yeah, no, growth takes time. I love that. Um, (laughs) In the Dig Deeper book, it starts off with um, the themes, uh, there's six themes. It's intention, healing, gratitude, presence, purpose, and growth. All of those are very like, big words that really I see them as like steps and like we all should be Mm -hmm. taking to like live a like more intentional life but like how did you land on those six themes and like which ones like yeah Yeah. so the goal with like our guided journals was to make them like a journey and specifically when we're thinking about mental wellness we're thinking about like the types of like topics that are important in one's life to live life to the fullest. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's supposed to be a combination, right? Like I I never wanted like all the questions to be about one thing. I love the fact that like we have some questions that may be really hard for people to answer and like really take time to sit with themselves and some questions that may evoke like really positive memories and like mm-hmm. some questions that like help people think about the future, like think about things that they've never thought of before. Um, So it was always supposed to be this combination of like past, present, future. Mm -hmm. And I think through like designing it, it's really like just taking them on a journey throughout their life to reflect on things that they wouldn't normally on a daily basis. Do you ever like struggle with any of the questions that you come up with? (laughs) Yes, there was like one specific (laughs) question like some questions call me out and it's crazy because it's like I it's like I know what the questions are but sometimes like I'm not ready for that question today. <laughs> but there was like one question that I had answered recently which was like which what confrontations are you avoiding and I was like oh, oh like calling me out today <laughs> when that question <laughs> so I, I will definitely say they do call me out and it's nice um when you do the journal like multiple times too because mm-hmm. I have like my journal from the first year, which was I started it like right around the time it was literally like one of my sample copies. And I had started it like right around the time I was launching my journal and to see that progress and then to see like the things I've written in the last year and see how those things change, I think has been really cool too. Um, With journaling, it's been tied to like mental health so many ways i know i've had therapists in the past be like oh like have you tried journaling and like have you like tried like <laughs> writing and like going back to what i was saying earlier like it just has been so hard for me to like connect to journaling because i just didn't know like how to start and like what to even say but like with this and having it be guided and having questions and like setting the tone for like what to like talk about you know it's been really helpful but how do you think journaling has impacted your mental health It definitely has like impacted my mental health tremendously because I think it's like one, like just like reflection is like really, really important for your mental well being. Um, taking time for yourself, like that's kind of what, what I think of it as is like you're taking time for you. And through that like time, you can do a lot of amazing things. One of those things is like you're processing like your emotions and your experiences. And I think that's often what you do in therapy, right? Like you're having a conversation with a therapist about things that are happening to you. And I think therapy is amazing. And I, I, it's something that I'll like always recommend, but also like if you're able to have those conversations with yourself or even other people that are close to you, I think like that's the beautiful thing about journaling is like you learn to like better understand yourself so that you can have better relationships with the people and things around you. Yeah. No, I think that's so well said and so beautifully put because I was um, going through <laughs> your Instagram, stalking you, just trying to like get like <laughs> multiple texts of like, you know, who you are and like what questions to ask and stuff like that. But I saw one of your captions and I flagged it and I was like, it said, I'm giving myself the gift of a joyous life. And yeah. I thought that was so beautiful because <laughs> like, we all want to like have these happy lives, but like we sometimes think that there's like obstacles in the way that are beyond our control and which definitely can be the case, but to be yeah. intentional and choose to give yourself that gift of giving yourself a joyous life. I thought that really 
resonate. So like, how have you been giving yourself a joyous life? What do you do to make sure you have a joyous life? Yeah. I love this question. Um, so for me, like at this stage of my life, joy has really been about like freedom and choice and like just doing the things that excite me. And it doesn't mean it's anything that I'm good at. For example, like I just went skiing last okay. week. How I go? It went well. I didn't fall. So yes. I was really proud of that. But I definitely took a very beginner lesson in skiing. And I think it's just like amazing to create experiences and to create memories. Something that's really important to me is like, I never want to look back at my life and be like, oh, like I never tried anything new or all I did was work. Like I am very intentional about creating moments for like joy and experiences and like trying things that are new. Something I've also learned through that experience is like sometimes discipline really does provide you more opportunities for that freedom and for that choice because the decisions that I made a couple years ago or a few years ago when I was starting my business and the, the work that I put in then has allowed me more flexibility today mm -hmm. in my time and in my schedule. So I'm always thinking about like, how do I di be disciplined in my life so that I can create opportunity for positive experiences and for positive memories. And also it's like, you don't have to wait for a certain milestone to be able to experience things. I think mm -hmm. that's like a common misconception. And of course, things like maybe travel or taking time off work or whatever it is that you may be thinking equates to joy. A lot of times it's not that like you're able to create joy in any present circumstance that you're in. It's honestly about reflecting and thinking about like, what are things that make me happy, right? Mm -hmm. And how do I do the, more of those things that make me happy? You mentioned a lot about reflecting. And lately I've been doing lots of reflecting, just thinking about time. I don't know about you, but it seems like this year, especially time has been going by so quickly. And oh my God. Okay. You are so right about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like, you could tell me, like, Rachel, it's only like September. And I'd be like, yeah, that sounds right. And no, no, I would not be thinking it's 2024. I would not be th like, I don't know what time's been on, but it's had somewhere to go. <laughs> and I get overwhelmed by how quickly time passes and this feeling of, am I doing enough? Am I doing too much? Do I mm -hmm. need to like, where do I need to like slow down or where do I need to pause or where do I need to like speed up? You know, just like all these questions that keep like flying my mind surrounding time. And when you were mentioning like reflecting and also the point about being disciplined to give yourself space and room to enjoy your life made me think about using our time wisely. And that sometimes sounds cryptic when people are like, oh, use your time wisely, but use it intentionally and use it with like, purpose yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah i think as someone who has started a business has their own team is juggling all that while also just being a young black woman in america like how have you been balancing time and how do you stay present and grounded yeah i think it's about making time so the thing about time is like there's this quote and i'm gonna butcher it but it's like yeah time is flying but sorry for the butchered <laughs> quote but it's like something about like the bad news is time is flying the good news is i'm the pilot it's actually Ooh. one of the quotes that are the dig deeper journal I um, that. <laughs> yeah, but it is so true because it's like sometimes we sit back and even i've had moments where i sit back and i'm like where has the time gone and yeah. i think it's so easy to just like watch your life go by as like a bystander and like that's I think the opposite of what like intention is mm -hmm. and when you are living a life with intention then you are like flying that plane and you're making sure that like time is on your side because I think with time amazing things happen right like you grow you experience life like you create memories like be time is a beautiful thing right because you can always look back and be like wow like look at all the amazing things that have happened in my life but what you don't want to do is like look back at with regret so i always recommend that people like use their time to just really like 
align that time with like the things that they want to create in life and like really thinking about like who you are and like what your goals are and making sure that at every stage you're setting time for the things that are important to you. So like some of those things will be work or like maybe some of those things for you will be like launching a new business or creating a podcast. But also some of that is going to be like, I'm taking time to myself and I'm going to spend time with family this weekend, or I'm going to hang out with my friends, or I'm going to chill in bed all day today. So I think it's all about balance and thinking about like what you need at the moment, but then also like what your future self needs you to do right now. Yeah. Oh, no, I love that concept. I think about like how sometimes when I'm reflecting on the past, I feel sometimes like stuck in like the what ifs or what I could have done. And then if I'm worrying about the future, I'm mm-hmm. thinking about like, how do I like make sure I'm good by that point? Or what do I do to like make sure I have a good future? But time is so fluid. And so it's just always surrounding us. It's always like, it's what time is it right now? You know, <laughs> like it's always there. And something about being present while also like holding both the present and the future with that creates this space of where it doesn't have to be overwhelming kind of just be comforting to know that you have time there is time and it's just like it's up to you to do it so i love that quote about the pilot i'm definitely going to use that and apply that to (laughs) did not butcher it at all thank you for that (laughs) we were talking about how you started journaling when you were younger that's seven i believe i'm just curious like Mm because i love visiting our younger selves but What do you think seven-year-old Naya would say right now? Oh my gosh. I think she would be like so amazed. And sometimes I get like the moments when I'm like proud of myself. Like I think about my younger self and I think about like how she thought about her future. And like maybe, yeah, like you said, like maybe you don't have like all the things you mentioned. Like you probably thought she might be married with kids or whatever at whatever Mm -hmm. age. Um, But I think she would be proud of the woman that I became and like the confidence I've been able to develop as I've gotten older for sure it's so funny looking at my old journals though because like I found this one like specific prompt it was about like I was writing about like my notebook I was like my notebook is where I can imagine things it was just like a very like cute youthful way to talk about like the importance of my journal at that time to me and so like I I had found that I think I don't know if that was this year or like a year ago, I had found that in one of my old journals. And like, I was like shedding a tear because I'm like, it's so crazy because you don't always fully know how like the things that are meaningful to you can create something so amazing at a later stage in your your life. And I think a lot of times, like as we get older, sometimes we lose touch with our purpose. And I'm so, so grateful that I've been able to share like just a little bit of mind with the world in a way that has been able to really resonate with people and, and help people in a real way. So super grateful for that. Oh, I think there's something to be said about like keeping that inner child alive and also like nourished and happy, you know, and the fact that like at seven, you're saying like how your notebook brought you some sort of like peace and comfort. And here you are now, not only still journaling, but creating people and giving access to like have people also experience that comfort and peace and journaling. You know, I think that's so inspiring. Like I started this off with because keeping that part of you alive is so important and like keeping like the core, like found like of who you are, like what gives you joy, what gives you your life meaning, keeping that alive. And like, it's so easy, especially like in today's world to like compare yourself to other people or feel like you have to change who you are as if something's like wrong with you. And like, we're like always being so like, here's like self-improvement. Here's how to be better. Here's how to not be like, you know, and like something about like, no, like I want to keep this part of me alive and share it with others and share it with myself. So, I mean, I think seven year old Nile will be so happy. I think she'd be thrilled <laughs> to like, you know, came more of like who you are and grounded in that. Cause I just, like I said, it's like, inspiring. yeah. And I think it's so, like you said, you're in child to those like childlike in- interests. I think one of the things that I miss most about being a kid is like, you're able to just try things and like, mm-hmm. there's no like expectation around it. Like I remember I, I used to like play tennis. I used to try every- one thing about my mom think shout out to her. Like she would put me in everything. Like I did acting, dance, gymnastics. I played tennis. Like I did all the things 
And so now I think as I gotten older, like I remember when I was like reaching like towards high school age, I would stop doing the things that I didn't feel like I was really good at. I was like, oh, like I'm not so good at this. And like, this is the age where I feel like people are being really serious. Yeah. And you start noticing that over time, like you lose those things. Recently, also this year, like I started playing tennis again. I, I'm Ooh. like in a beginner like, tennis class now. And it's just like getting back to those things. And I'm just like, I'm just going to try it and like have fun. That's the root of it. Like, just try <laughs> Why not? Like, why not? as long as you're having fun and yeah. trying, I think that's really the key. Like, I have my friend Julia, who I admire so much. She's always trying something new. Like, always. Like, every time oh. I talk, she's doing something new. Like, oh, I'm quilting. I'm scrapbooking. I'm painting that. And oh. I'm just like, how do you have time to do that? And how the space to do that? But I think it's so beautiful to see people just try, you know, without the fear mm-hmm. of like, embarrassment or the fear of like oh what if I'm not good at it like you're just trying because I think that's the hardest exactly. part for a lot of people is to just like get over themselves and just try you know like I don't know if you've heard of this thing called like grandma hobbies that is like going up like it's increasing popularity yeah, like, you- <laughs> oh I'm living right I- now like I have yarn right now no one told me yarn was gonna be ten dollars uh I don't know what they call it a barrel maybe Listen, uh, it's not a cheap hobby uh, I was like, I might as well just buy a blanket, but you know, I am, I am, I'm, I'm knitting and I am growing and I am trying new things. So I like, I, with like, p- resolutions are so big in the new year, but I don't really have resolutions. I just have things like a, a try list of things I want to try. You know, like I want to try, like you said, I want to try tennis. I, I want to like get back into like sign language. I just want to like try things that like I've always wanted to do, but I have always made excuses to not do them. Like whether it be the time or like money yeah. or, um, it's like, oh, I think I'll be bad. That I'll be embarrassing because, like, I don't know how to do it. But like, everyone doesn't know how to do something. You know, we all have things that we can like trade and like skills we can share. But just the the art of trying. I'm gonna take, and, this, as, I'm gonna take this as my sign to get to. to okay, Naya, we're gonna be knitting accountability buddies. Where I'm be like, hey, Naya, how's it going? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like my blanket, like, like starting, but. Oh my gosh! I'm we're excited. gonna finish. We're, by the end of the year, we're gonna have a whole collection. I mean, we're just gonna have one. We're just trying. You know, not even gonna yeah. set the bar high. Right. Like, <laughs> and then, but it's just like this idea of just trying. And I think, like, with going back to like journaling, just trying and just expressing, see what it is you want and what you need, and like how to like how to like, keep that inner child happy and like grow it. Yeah. So our theme for 2024 is all around this idea of self-discovery. And I'm so happy to start off this year talking to you because literally self-discovery, like we talked about in journaling and like how to like become one with yourself and come back to yourself. Um, I guess my question is, what have you learned on your self-discovery that like you can share as share with our audience? Yeah, I think. One thing that I've learned is that, especially like going through therapy and like journaling, is that like every thought and experience you have comes from somewhere. Something that therapy really, really taught me was like the importance of like just your your childhood and your past experience and the influence that it has on you today. So I, I really recommend people like taking some time to like listen to your inner child and like reflect on past experiences and how you were raised and like what you've gone through and really allowing that to, I guess, determine like how you want to be today. Because sometimes we think that we don't have a choice when it comes to like who we are and and, like how we present ourselves in the world. And like, I think sometimes we do things that are based on like trauma and negative experiences, but I think when you realize where certain things come from, it it makes it a little bit freeing because you're like, well, I have a choice. Like, yes, I've experienced these hardships and it's caused me to feel insecure in these ways, but I can actually change that and and I can speak positively into myself. So I think for me, self-discovery really starts with like asking yourself a lot of questions and analyzing your motives so that you can know yourself and everybody else and everything else is either inspiration or just noise. Oh, oh. I love that. Question I have from that is how do you 
deal with sometimes the discomfort of self-discovery like sometimes learning about yeah. ourselves like us like how <laughs> like asking for a friend um how how do you yeah. balance that like that self-discovery with self-love and self-acceptance because yeah. yeah i think the the hard part about self-discovery is like not everything you discover you're gonna love <laughs> And like some of the things that you you discover about yourself are going to be like really hard, but I think it's also really, really important to, I think self-discovery also comes with self-acceptance, right? You have to accept who you are today and like give, yes, you can give yourself the opportunity to grow and change in the ways that you want to, but like you are deserving of love and worth right in this present moment, like before you heal, before you grow, before you fix all of these things that you think you need to fix about yourself. Um, really just like speaking positively and like love into yourself because your worth and love is not based on like you being perfect or you being close to perfect or you being completely healed. I mean, after that, there's nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Naya, seriously, thank you so much for just, being in the space with me, sharing your energy with me. It's been such a good conversation. Like I am so excited. I can't wait to see what Inside the Out has in store for the future. Do you have any hopes for 2024 as we enter this year? Any like, you know, I know we're knitting. I know the hope is knit. So yeah, we're definitely in 2024. <laughs> Size knitting. What do we got? We have just gone digital. So we actually Ooh. now have an app that is launching the stores. For those of you who don't like paper and pen, you'll now be able to journal on your device. You'll also be able to audio journal, which I think is a really cool feature because I know some people who just like to talk to themselves. And I think that will be a really, really cool way for people to reflect in ways that like work best for them. Uh, so super excited about that this year and definitely more in store. So Stay tuned at all things inside the now. <laughs> okay. Let them know where they can find you. Yes. They can find the brand inside the now at inside the now.com. And then on all socials at inside the now, if you're looking for my personal page, it is at Naya Jones. That's N Y A A Jones. Thank you, Naya. I am so grateful for you. And yeah, I'm be looking out for that audio one. Cause that sounds really fun. <laughs> The voice yeah, notes will be long. Right. Thank you so much for having me. This has been such an amazing conversation. So yeah. honored. I love everything about the Loveland Foundation. So, yeah. so happy that we got to meet in person and now chat some more. Yeah. Um, I'm manifesting that we'll be able to meet again this year. Like, yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. It's gonna we got to compare yeah. our blankets. Like, we got to see how the blankets turn out. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you all for joining us for a very special episode of The Unfolding, presented by the Love and Foundation. At the Love and Foundation, we are committed to showing up for communities of color in unique and powerful ways, with a particular focus on Black women and girls. Our resources and initiatives are collaborative, and they prioritize opportunity, access, validation, and healing. Since our founding, the Therapy Fund has provided financial support for therapy to over 13,000 Black women, girls, and non-binary individuals across the country. This year, our goal is to provide free therapy to at least 6,000 more. If you'd like to join us and invest in generational change, visit our website at theloveandfoundation.org for ways to give. To stay updated on new episodes and any future programming, follow us on Instagram and Meta, or check out our website at theloveandfoundation.org.